Thank you for uh, listening to my presentation uh, today. Uh, I'm going to address a talk uh, entitled uh, Fading Magnetic Anomalies, Thermal Structure, and Earthquake in Subduction Zones. Uh, these studies are mostly uh, conducted during my PhD. And, and also, I, I'll introduce uh, uh, my current study uh, after I got a, a professorship in Busan National University. So um, maybe uh, most of people in this uh, in this um, uh, room session um, may have heard about the, the life cycle of the oceanic lithosphere. The oceanic lithosphere uh, started their uh, their life uh, formation process caused by seawater uh, at the middle middle ocean reach, and with a lot of earthquake and formation of volcanic arc by subduction process beneath the overriding plate. And it fi finally ends up its life. Uh, during the formation of oceanic lithosphere, the oceanic curves start to record the magnetic anomaly as, uh, as the same orientation to the uh, Earth magnetic, magnetic field. Luckily, magnetic anomaly exhibit wiggling shape as like uh, the right figure here because of the randomly changing uh, magnetic polarity. Uh, using this, we could estimate the age of oceanic crust and kinematic properties, such as spreading speed and movement history of the plate and, and yeah, etc. cetera. The, what about the magnetic anomalies in subduction zone? Uh, there are only a few studies have conducted it in this area using magnetic studies. The subduction zone is also a place where seafloor spreading magnetic anomaly ends up their lives, same as um, the, the, the life of oceanic crust. And the creation of a new magnetic anomaly. And in the case of a four mental magnetic anomaly, it is considered as ori originated from serpentinized uh, mental wedge. When the oceanic lithosphere subducts, the seawater uh, the, uh, the seawater is emitted from the subducted oceanic, uh, oceanic crust. So uh, it is, so that is why um, these serpentine mental wedge, there are uh, plenty of uh, the uh, magnetite and which generate this uh, induced, uh, induced magnetization, <clears throat> induced magnetic field. So the so so mo most of subduction zone, I think every subduction zone, you can observe this high peak of magnet, uh, marine magnetic anomaly. So what what about what about the seafloor spreading uh, magnetic anomaly? This signal does not originate from differ uh, from the original oceanic crust. However, the seafloor spreading magnetic anomaly seem to disappear at subduction zone, and why? Uh, it was my uh, basic question during my PhD. So, oh, okay. So uh, the decreasing signal basically can be classified into three main regions. First, the increasing distance from distant distance uh, from the magnetic sources. Uh, since we collect the marine magnetic data you know, on the on the sea surface here. Uh, at the same uh, at the same time, the source goes deeper as uh, as the, the oceanic crust subducts, the land from the trench, uh, due to the increasing distance. So, so we could observe the weakened signal by uh, the the distance between increasing distance between the, the original source and observation point. But only that also the thermal de uh, demagnetization by increasing temperature. As you can see, uh, magnetic mineral completely lose their magnetization above the temperature. You can simply watch what happened on the right. Basically, uh, it is attached by ion bolt. However, once, once this fire heat up the temperature until uh, losing magnetization, it is, uh, it is no more attracted. And once it's cooled down, it, it is uh, attracted again. And when the magnet loses the magnetization at a certain temperature, we call it Curie temperature. And the last region is by alteration of magnetic minerals. 
Once the magnetic minerals are altered by oxidation process, it usually loses their in uh, intensities. As you can see the figure on the left, the intensity of natural, uh, natural remnant magnetization, we call it NRM, uh, tend to decrease by increasing oxidation. So if you think rusty iron and pure iron, the rusty iron uh, usually uh, has less attractive uh, to, the, to the magnet than the pure iron. You, can, could, uh, you could easily be understood. So to address this problem, uh, here I introduced the method and I, uh, that I used. The first, here is the simplified workflow of my study. And first I selected the study area using these three criteria, a dense magnetic, uh, the, the dense marine magnetic data should be exist and no tectonic complications. And the magnetic anomaly should uh, should oblique to the trench. If the anomaly is parallel to the trench, we, we cannot uh, the, see the difference, the, the changing the amplitude. So after that, I, pro I, I processed and built a marine magnetic, uh, marine magnetic anomaly map and slip geometry following these corrections. Uh, for slip geometry data, uh, after I cropped and merged, uh, after I crop and merge, uh, merged, and, and I verified this, uh, I verified the seismic profile. Then I constrained key parameters, inverting equivalent magnetization and the rem uh, remaining amount of magnetization. We call it now. I'm calling REM. Uh, based on this uh, analysis, we interpret this into phenomenon, and finally got the results. So, so in this method, method section, I introduced crossover, crossover analytic method, merging the magnetic data uh, collected by two different sensors. And uh, to help you understand this topic, I will explain what is equivalent magnetization and re uh, remaining amount of magnetization. So this is, uh, this is the map, <clears throat> the, the, the data map track. The black one is the black solid line indicate the the, pro, the the data collected by proton precision magnetometer, and and the and the red solid line, solid line indicate the, the data collected by uh, shipboard three component magnetometer. But <clears throat> uh, you will see the difference on the next slide. But uh, you can see the the Close to Japan, uh, uh, easy, easy of Japan. The, so many uh, proton precision magnetic, magnetic data are collected. On the other hand, the outside uh, here, the many area are still uh, the empty, and and this area are the field with um, these STCM data set. So. So you can see the difference between two uh, PPM and SCM data. This is the, those data are after processed. And uh, in case of the PPM data track, you, uh, you can uh, PPM data you can see uh, red and blue and red and blue and very high resolution data uh, data so pre precise data uh, data. On the other hand, it, SCM data uh, there is no uh, the kind of patterns showing uh, like a PPM data track. Uh, the data are sh showing the ir irregular patterns and why this difference can be made. And so, and why those data sets show different patterns. So first of all, I had to make a very nice, very fine uh, marine magnetic anomaly map. So that's why I could, I, I had to merge uh, to the data set and, 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 and in, uh, and uh, proton precision, uh, in case of the proton precision magnetometer, measure only absolute value and uh, absolute value of magnetic field uh, because the sensor is towed uh, about 250 to 300 meters be behind the ship. Once it is deployed, it measures only core, uh, the, the magnetic field from outer core and local, uh, localized uh, magnetic field. We call it mag magnetic anomaly. 
So, uh, but this sensor only measures the scalar magnetic field. And the, but uh, this sensor is very uh, sensitive. So it should be away uh, to, to, uh, to or 300 meters away uh, from the ship. And not only the ship, also if there is fishing boat, uh, it can, the data can, cannot be used. So, uh, however, the, the magnetic field acquired by uh, the SCCM, data, uh, SCCM magnetometer consists of various components. Uh, so it has uh, the data of outer core, uh, also the magnetic field of local, uh, local magnetic anomaly from the ocean crust. And not only that, also it measures uh, ship induced and remote magnetic field and viscous field. And those, the ship, the, the blue text, uh, the blue text can be corrected using its checking method. However, uh, in case of the viscous field and other uh, unknown, uh, unknown field cannot be corrected. However, um, there's the benefit of the, the, the this sensor is able to obtain, uh, observe the three uh, vector component x and y and z. So, uh, uh, there's one on, uh, one more. Uh, it is also the, able to collect the data anytime when the ship moves. So, if the cruise is not for the magnetic uh, collecting geophysical data. Uh, if someone wants to observe something like a, 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 the cruise is uh, autonomous perfect science or cruise, cruise for the, the marine biological science, then we can, we, anytime we can collect the data. This is, uh, that's the benefit of the, of the, of this sensor. So it is very cheap and easily collect the data set. So, 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 uh, at the cross point uh, to the data set, uh, should we exhibit the same value? So uh, during my PhD, I found that uh, there, there, there is a trendy error between two, uh, two data sets. Yeah. But it, it should be shown the same, exactly same value, but they are not. You can see the difference. So I try to find the patterns between the two different magnetic data and found, found that SCM data has a linear trend error. So I applied this cross-up method. Uh, from the two different characteristics of, of magnetic sensor, I put PPM data as the absolute value and SCM data as the relative value. So I adjust, adjusted the linear trend of SCM cross point on the uh, one track to the uh, to tether of uh, PPM track, okay, PPM uh, cross point, as like right figure here. As you can see, the histogram. Eventually, I could reduce the misfit on the cross point. So, so the the here the blue is original SCM, which means uh, before correction. You can see the 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 misfit. Uh, there are large misfit. Uh, uh, but after uh, leveling uh, using x 2 uh developed by uh, Paul Vessel, the GMT, who, who is the founder of GMT software. Uh, and using that method, I could correct. Uh, the method is slightly uh, got better, but, uh, but using my method, the, the crossover misfit is highly reduced. So using this, <clears throat> so these are the comparison between uh, the, the x 2 and my method. Uh, using x 2 you, you can see the linear, linear trend error here and here and here as well. Uh, but, but in case of um, uh, my method, the, the, trend, the trend error is totally uh, eliminated. The corrected, not eliminated. So, so using this uh, improved marine magnetic anomaly map, 
I inverted the magnetic anomaly to equivalent magnetization. So what is equivalent magnetization? So many people, I think uh, there are only few, uh, if you, uh, uh, there are only few people knows about uh, the equivalent magnetization and magnetic the studies. So I will introduce the, the basic concept of equivalent magnetization. So inverting the magnetic anomaly to magnetization, we always face non-uniqueness non problem. The theory of potential field predict that uh, there is an infinity of possible magnetized source uh, that can explain any magnetic anomaly. For each ex explanation, if there is a source of highly uh, high magnetization source here, it shows this uh, patterns of magnetic anomaly. And if uh, there is a, the bigger source, the bigger source on the shallow part and, but a low magnetization, it may, uh, it can have the same uh, similar patterns of magnetic anomaly. And also, uh, so, so, uh, so to, to uh, remove the complication, we use equivalent magnetization. We think that the oceanic crust is evenly magnetized like this. So it is required to have additional constraint uh, and assumption to determine the solution by applying this assumption and geometry information, we, could, uh, we can compute the equivalent magnetization. So during uh, during this analysis, I made a new analytic method estimating estimate the remaining amount of magnetization called the RAM. So basically, uh, the magnetic anomaly should exhibit the si similar amplitude and the similar shape. If it is formed at the same time and uh, at the same place, uh, if we have the standard magnetization and the source geometry information we can compare the difference between the observed and modeled magnetic anomaly. So if RAM is the same, uh, if the ratio show the one, there, there is no variation. If the, the, the uh, RAM bigger than one, there is some reason, maybe uh, due to the tectonic complication where C mount can, can be affected. Uh, however, the RAM, uh, REM, if REM shows um, uh, lower than one, and which means uh, the loss of magnetization. So it, it is very simple concept. So I approached, uh, using this method, I approach, I uh, analyzed the subducted uh, uh, magnetic anomaly. So likewise, um, I could build and improve a marine magnetic anomaly map using both scalar and vector magnetic data. So white box is the area where previous study compiled. Here's Oku, uh, uh, by Okueda, 1991. And I enlarged the, the, the other area. Um, so I studied the first, the after subduction, and the second before subduction. As further, we studied five available subduction zones by uh, this general, generalized method. So part one, the fading magnetic anomaly after subduction. So here's the same magnetic anomaly map uh, from Okubeda, 1991. The uh, magnetic anomaly on the oceanic crust uh, once its amplitude decreases, uh, short wavelengths disappear. Uh, using this uh, characteristic, characteristic, uh, they uh, they applied the spectral analysis to estimate the angle of slip geometry. And using the over oversimplified model, they estimated the curie, curie temperature depth. At the same time, there is uh, there is the best. It is the best way um, uh, what they can do, uh, what, can, what they can investigate, because at the time there is no slip geometry at all. So, but 
So I actually I I have compared the the slip geometry and and their estimation the slip geometry estimation with the the magnetic using the magnetic anomaly. It shows uh, the similar. It uh, of course the the angle in the beginning is similar, but at, uh, in the deeper part uh, here is steeper, but it almost show the similar patterns. It very well correlate, correlated. And nowadays, uh, the, oh. so nowadays the slope geometry is well constrained by seismology. So, so we doubt that, uh, so we could we still use um, this uh, method to determine the Curie Einstein depth. So it was it was my uh, the motivation of PhD. So here is the satellite geometry, uh, so, uh, satellite gravity anomaly map, and I much improved my uh, marine magnetic anomaly map. These uh, red and blue uh, zebra patterns are interpreted. I interpreted the, these isochrons and defined their edge between mesozoic M sequence uh, five to sixteen which is equivalent to 125 and 138 uh, million year ago. And the crust formed with 60 to 90 millimeter per year under uh, fast spreading condition. So you can see uh, these, uh, these solid, uh, black solid line indicate uh, two fractured and he, uh, here, uh, the dashed uh, solid line indicate the, um, the magne uh, magnetic anomaly uh, from the forward mantle, <coughs> forward mantle. And this white uh, solid line is trench. And those contours are the slip, slip geometry. And you can see some seam out here, here, and here. And these, <coughs> the uh, the high magnetic anomaly before subduction uh, indicate the outerized structure, the, the fracture of uh, oceanic crust, ocean, oceanic lithosphere. So I selected this area C because the anomaly is large enough and clean and less tectonic uh, has less tectonic complication. So we assume that uh, uh, the magnetic anomaly is decreased by some other effect after subduction. So we inverted the equivalent magnetization before subduction by applying Parker and Schuster's method. The right figure is, a, an, is an example of the, the, this red box. And the standard shape of equivalent magnetization is this red dot. As you can see, uh, the anomaly have all similar shape. And there are some some um, the, the deviations. So so this uh, to understand uh, to know the standard shape, we uh, we normalized the the, the averaged out uh, the those uh, those profiles, and we made uh, the normalized equivalent magnetization. So using the magnetization and slip geometry, we could estimate uh, 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 the magnetic anomaly decrease depending on the, the increasing depth. So you now the, the red uh, model, the, uh, red, the red solid line indicates a synthetic magnetic model and uh, black line indicate the, the observed data set. So you can, in the beginning, after subduction, it shows similar trend. However, after subduction and it goes deeper, you can see the difference between two, uh, two modeled and observed anomaly. So, uh, so to understand this, uh, I made uh, the, the, I compared the ratio of each magnetic anomaly. So fin uh, finally, I got this result. So, so you can see uh, there is a two-step of decay. So why? Why did the, the meaning of the two-step two two, two of decay? 
Um, so we interpret this, uh, the fast decay between the nine to 12, uh, 12 kilometer is a demagnetization of ex extrusive basalt layer by temperature increase. And if you look at uh, this figure and table, the ocean, ocean, crust of consist, ocean crust consists of several layers, but the, the magnetic mineral of ocean crust can be classified by two layers. One is layer 2A, which is consist, uh, extrusive basalt. Uh, it, uh, in case of extrusive, uh, extrusive basalt, it's uh, quenched uh, uh, when the magma, when the magma uh, if there is magma flow, um, it is quenched out. And so you know, uh, due to the fast cooling process, there are more titan magnetite uh, on on this layer. On the other hand, two B and three and and deeper layer, you can you can uh, we could observe more magnetic uh, magnetite, which create temperature a five hundred and eighty degree. Uh, in case of titan magnetite, the create temperature is hundred to hundred fifty, depending on the oxidation state. And titan magnetite the has stronger uh, remnant magnetization than the than magnetite. That's why we could observe this kink shape of um, decreasing patterns. And uh, later, after uh, 12, uh, 12 kilometer below, uh, we could see uh, slowly decreasing patterns, uh, decreasing the RAM patterns. So <clears throat> I have compared uh, these values to the, the most recent um, the thermal model, the geodynamic, geodynamic thermal model uh, in the in Japan trench area. Uh, the most of the recent uh, geothermal model in the it, uh, this model, Wada et al. Nine, uh, 2014, suggest suggests that uh, true about 200, 200 degree at 20 kilometer of slab surface. But our, our observation indicates about uh, 380 maximum, but uh, normally like, like a 200, 200 or 300 between at uh, 12 kilo of slab surface. And 20 kilo, uh, 20 kilometer of slab surface, uh, Ten kilometers of slab surface is reaching point for the 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 true temperature of uh, magnetite, which is uh, five hundred and eighty degrees Celsius. Uh, this rap rapidly increasing temperature can be due to the enhanced, I think, enhanced hydrothermal activity as a result of nucleation of earthquake, and. Uh, a, the, in case of the extrusive basalt, the the the, the ductile, brittle ductile transition happens between three hundred to three hundred and fifty degree. So when the rock, when when the, this is the weakening point, when the, the brittle ductile transition is the weakening point of the rock. So if the rock suddenly 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 uh, become uh, change their phase, then voila, there would be some the earthquake. We we uh, we can guess that. So uh, the part to decreasing magnetic anomaly before subduction. So so during the analysis of the part one, I found the decreasing signal before subduction as well. So I tried to apply similar approach for uh, for anomaly before subduction. So here, the yellow and green circle indicate a uh, heat flow observation point, and white dashed line here is seismic survey line, uh, seismic survey line, <clears throat> and and here here is anomaly before subduction. As you can see, uh, in the beginning, uh, I think uh, this high anomaly uh, the the here is observation uh, observed anomaly is bigger, much bigger than synthetic is affected by 
this um, the C mount located here, this place. So that's why it shows higher than than uh, normalized um, the synthetic anomaly. And it sh and after that it shows a similar shape, but after and close to approaching to the trench uh, landward. Uh, to, uh, to, so the landward to the landward from the outrise. So it start to decrease the observation, uh, the observed anomaly start to decrease. And yeah, and we also uh, using say the same method, we uh, compared um, the, 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 the decreasing pattern of each anomaly. And finally, I we <clears throat> here is a result. I found that the, uh, the RAM start to decay roughly from the outer eyes, the top of the fracture. And it slowly decreased about 20% uh, of, uh, there is a 20% of the amplitude loss. And at the same time, the same, same area, on, uh, according to the result of Yamano et al, the heat flow increase landward uh, the, toward the trench from outrise. And Fuji et al, the, the, the PPBS ratio shows uh, the, a lot of hydration from outrise to the trench. So these indicate that uh, the active hydrothermal circulation, maybe uh, the increase in heat flow and uh, and the hydration of oceanic crust indicate the, there would be the hydrothermal circulation in the, in the oceanic crust. So to simplify uh, the lithospheric flexure, the by subduction, sub, uh, subducting process, uh, which uh, make um, crystal normal fault, additional normal fault, and rejuvenate normal fault. And uh, this uh, causes the the hydrothermal circulation, the rejuvenated hydrothermal circulation as a result of magnetic mineral alteration. And uh, this uh, mineral alteration will decrease the magnetization. So, so using this method, uh, I generalize, I, generalize, I uh, apply to, other, to the other subduction zones. So there are five regions. Well, the most of region are the EZ of United States. So there are plenty of data set and high quality data set. So I selected these, those area, including Japan. I studied five, uh, five study. I selected five study area. Uh, but there are several, uh, there are several area in case of uh, south of um, Alaska and um, and Cascadia region, there are uh, tectonic, yeah, there are some tectonic complication. Even though that, even though these tectonic complication, I have tried um, to look at the, the the patterns, the ramp patterns. Here is the result. So so the Japan Trench area, I already. Uh, explained. The, so from outrise to the trench, there is a, about 20% of uh, uh, RAM lost, uh, losing RAM uh, uh, by the mineral alteration. And after subduction, there is a, a fast decrease, decay of uh, about 40% of uh, lo um, losing magnetization. And, and yeah, and I found that there is no, uh, um, comparing to the first result, the Japan, the after subduction Japan trench area, I, I uh, in the paper I said that I mentioned that um, there, uh, there is a fast decay of um, after the fast decay and there is there is slow decay, but uh, the most recent uh, the after I made a correction, then I found that there's no decay, which uh, indicate that the hydro, uh, the water itself may cool, heat up 
the crust. How also it cool down the crust. Yeah, uh, I mean uh, the. So it's a bit, uh, a bit complicated. Water, if the water circulate, the temperature uh, gradient will be. Uh, there's uh, uh, there's no uh, huge temperature gradient. I mean, yeah, because of the hydrothermal circulation. So the deeper should be colder, and but shallow, the shallow part should be warmer. Yeah. So I found uh, the same pattern, similar patterns, all all the other old soft, uh, old uh, oceanic crust area, Western Ocean and Central Ocean and South Alaska, except the Cascadia. Uh, Cascadia shows uh, Cascadia is very young uh, oceanic crust. And I, I found that there is no, uh, uh, no uh, significant decay before subduction. And after subduction, and before subduction, I found that there is a rapid decay of, um, of magnetization to about 80%, uh, which um, I will explain it um, in the next slide. Next slide. So uh, all the ocean leaf of pier, I, I observed is this damping uh, the shape, decay before subduction, and 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 this in the same area in the young ocean leaf of pier, I observed no decay, and after subduction, I found that fast decay and no decay, and uh, in young ocean leaf of pier, there is fast decay about eighty percent. Is due to the high uh, heat flow from the uh, from the the <clears throat> uh, high heat flow uh, high heat flow from a uh, young young leaf of pier itself uh, has high heat flow. So the and also the crust itself is very thin, thinner than um, thinner than the old ocean leaf of pier. And also, there's no uh, there's no flexure, the, because uh, ridge the, the the distance between the trench and ridge uh, there is uh, no huge. Um, uh, uh, the distance is very shorter, very short. But in case of the 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 old ocean crust area, and there is a the the distance is very long, so there is a flexure structure. Which generate the um, the normal fault, but there is no normal fault in the case. Uh, the, there is normal fault, but uh, with res with respect to the old ocean lithosphere, there is uh, like a there is not many. So the heat, uh, so hydrothermal circulation cannot be act um, activated. Uh, so I mean, the, there would be the reduced hydrothermal circulation in in the uh, old ocean crust. So that's why we, we could see the two different patterns. So uh, this is the, the conclusion. The fluid, uh, the fluid, uh, the fluid, the existence of fluid in the crust and, and the this circulation, hydrothermal circulation are very important uh, to understand the uh, the decay of marine magnetic anomaly. And also, this is the only way to observe um, to observe the temperature of oceanic crust right now, um, I think, yeah. But the, the most of heat flow study uh, measure, measure the heat flow on the uh, accretion prism and uh, on the surface of the accretion prism and ocean crust. Which can be uh, which can be the data can be altered by, um, um, by uh, uh, the the lateral lateral the fluid flow of uh, in the in uh, poor fluid flow of the the the, the accretion prism. So so data may not be um can I say um precise um using if yeah so 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 this magnetic uh, using this magnetic 
uh, decreasing magnetization method, uh, which is uh, the um, the uh, uh, in these days we we use uh, indirect uh, thermometer. So in, in Korea, in, uh, there are many people in in this room, but in case of uh, in Korea, every restaurant and every office you have to measure. Once there is a small screen uh, in front of the gate, and you can it's estimate uh, the the machine is measure your temperature without um, uh, the poking the th uh, thermometer on on your mouth or, or here. Mm. Then you can measure the the temperature using the the uh, infrared the 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 light. Uh, the uh, yeah infrared uh, ray, uh, ray. I, 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 anyway so uh, this method is uh, similar so we, we could estimate, estimate the temperature using uh, in the in, in the indirect way hmm. I think this is only method um, maybe I have to compare the, the seismic method can estimate this can estimate the temperature maybe maybe I should compare the the, the data, uh, the result between this, uh, the seismic and the magnetic, and yeah. So, so uh, after I made the, the previous um, the result, I'm currently working on the developing subduction subduction geodynamic model uh, to understand this the subduction, subduction physics and their properties. And this is the, the, the thermal model uh, suggested by Kawadaidal. And this one is suggested by Spinelli, Glenn Spinelli, <clears throat> uh, 2008 and 2009. And Kawada model cannot explain uh, the, the after subduction. Uh, this uh, Kawada suggests that there is an active hydrothermal uh, circulation uh, before, like, uh, in ocean crust, in ocean crust before subduction, so that's why the heat flow increase. But uh, he cannot. He said that he cannot explain the after subduction. So uh, right now, I'm I'm trying to uh, develop the geodynamic model, the uh, slip geodynamic model. But, uh, if you look at this figure. Um, there are so many um, like normal fault you can see. Uh, I'm trying to make this normal fault and this no, um, to to simulate the hydration and this hydration will alter the the magnetic minerals and as a result of decreasing magnetization. And also uh, using this model, I'd like to see uh, this model is to uh, to macro, I mean, too big. I, I have to cut it uh, very sh on your shallow part and we'll look at it later. And to see the, the effect of the, 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 hydro, the, the hydrothermal fluid, the, the heat and heat flow. Uh, this is observation actually. And this is the based on observation. And it's, it, it is insane that, um, after the seaward from the trench, and there is a high peak of heat flow on the observation. The heat. So, so why this happened? And why after subduction on the operating plate, the heat flow measures very, uh, shows very low, um, uh, low value compared to here. So people think that the, the, the the ocean crust is very uh, cold uh, using this uh, method, uh, using this uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, re reflecting uh, these uh, data set. However, if the the data set, uh, the, the heat flow data set on measured on uh, the accretion prism is um, perturbed by the lateral, lateral of fluid flow, um then then we, we don't know what happened yeah exactly so 
So this peak, so I think that this peak is due to the increasing the temperature of uh, the by um, the subducting slab and the, the hydrothermal circulation here. But I think there's no, not exact hydrothermal circulation. Water, uh, the, it is the easiest, easiest, uh, easiest way when water goes somewhere as and some 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 water will go to the heat uh, full arc and some water will go to uh, will uh, retreat from from deeper part to shallow part and then as a result of the heat peak so uh, so uh, in these day uh, I'm also focusing on the understanding the West Philippine basin the tectonic evolution of the West Philippine basin so uh, last uh, September, I uh, <clears throat> I went uh, I joined the, the, the cruise survey uh, cruise mission. Um, uh, the data this is a planned data. Uh, we plan to survey this area, but uh, due to the the on uh, the typhoon, uh, three anomalous typhoon, very big typhoon. I uh, we could not uh, get all the data set. We we just reduced uh, reduced the time uh, the plan. Yeah, like this. And so actually here um, here there is uh, the microplate structure here. So I would like to uh, survey this area, but I couldn't because of the typhoon. And also, so instead 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 of going. Uh, for, for the most part, I uh, conducted uh, the survey in this area uh, where the non transform discontinu discontinuity exists. So maybe in many people in this room do not know uh, do, uh, do not know about the, the non transform discontinuity. The non transform discontinuity is the 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 cousin. Uh, the branch of the transform for fault. Yeah, it's like uh, in Korean, uh, we, we say it's cousin of um, the transform fault. Um, the transform fault basically uh, perpendicular to the ridge. But uh, in case of non transform discontinuity, it is oblique to the ridge. It is uh, um, this uh, structure is formed by the ridge propagation. Then this rich propagation is due to the the magmatic uh, magmatic current uh, in the segment. If here this the magmatic current is uh, uh, higher, uh, you know, uh, the current is higher. Uh, anyway. Uh, current, uh, stronger, stronger than here at this part, and there is a rich prop propagation, and you can see um, by rich propagation uh, in the same direction. You can see the outer stove fort, and in in different direction, and this uh, this area you can see the fracture zone. Yeah, we call this more failed rift and and inner inner stove fault, and people say that more inner stove fault. Uh, fade rift, and but here you can see the friction, yeah, huge friction. So, so here is the the result, the bathymetry data collected by uh, uh, this cruise survey uh, by Isabu uh, RV Isabu, and here is here is a non transform discontinuity. Uh, here is the interpretation of my uh, my interpretation. The red solid line. Transparent solid line indicate the NTD, and and this black solid line indicate the strike of um, the the abyssal hill. the the uh, The direction of uh, NTD and abyssal hill is not per perpendicular at all. So which and also the abyssal hill, uh, the NTD shows. Um, Northwest southeast direction uh, strike, and it suddenly changed its direction about 90, 90 degree. But so here, 
if you look at the left left figure, this is the uh, particle gravity gradient uh, map. Uh, you, you, you could see these uh, very thin uh, yellow solid, solid line here and here and here. It, it, uh, the solid line indicate the NTD is abruptly changed in, in, in some point. So what we could know about, about it. And using this NTD, we could, we could estimate the re relative location of Paleo Ridge. So, so here I found that there is a so fault here and, and fracture zone and stop fault. Using this uh, different structure, I could estimate uh, during the spreading in um, during the spreading of when the ridge was exist in this area, in this area, we the the we can see we can we could estimate the order. So which one is the of which one is front, which one is rear, rear part? Yeah. So we could estimate the the ridge location, the rel relative ridge location, and according to this data set, then and then we. I um, I think the rich uh, location orientation is changed from here to like this. So as a result, um, as a result, there, there there is there was a huge um, um, huge. Uh, the rich propagation at the same way at the same direction uh, to the west and uh, between the 45 to 30 ma uh, there is also the the the, the propagation changes to east uh, east direction so we could see this uh, uh, entity structure so uh, the result is similar to the 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 rich propagation in Kalsberg Ridge published by uh, Jerome in 1998. So I'm, I'm I'm now I'm based on this result. I'm I'm trying to make uh, the paper right now. Yeah, this uh, that's all for uh, um, my work and my current work. And thank you very much for your.